Hello all. In the previous video, we saw about rest and rest seats. In this video, we will see about direct retainers. So moving on with what is the direct retainer? It is that component of removable partial denture that helps to retain and prevent dislodgement of the processes. It consists of clasp assembly or precision attachment. So direct retainers can be either intracoronal or extracoronal. Intracoronally mostly attachments are used whereas extracoronally either attachments or clasp assemblies are used. These clasps in either are either classified as circumferential clasps or bar clasps. Circumferential clasps are in turn classified as cast circumferential or combination circumferential. We will see what are the types of these clasps in detail in the next video. For now, we will move into the details of the direct retainers as such. Extra Among the extra coronal direct retainers, clasp assemblies are the most commonly used. So, what is the clasp assembly? It is that part of the RPD that acts as retainer and stabilizer for processes by partially encompassing or contacting the abutment as you could see in this picture. It encompasses or circles contacts the abutment. What are the components of this clasp assembly? It has retentive arm, reciprocal arm, rest. As we saw in the previous video, the rest could be either occlusal rest, cingulum rest or incisal rest. And the fourth part is the minor connector. Minor connector can also be dealt as a separate part of the removable partial denture. So, moving on, before moving into the details of the parts of the clasp assembly, we should know some principles based on which the retentive arm or the retentive uh, reciprocal arm works. So, the clasp, uh, we should know certain terms before moving on to the principles. So, what are these two terms? Height of contour and undercut. The line encircling a tooth denoting its greatest circumference is known as height of contour. At this part, the tooth circumference is the greatest. So, this line is known as the height of contour. It is determined by using a dental surveyor. The portion below this height of contour is known as undercut. Protheros cone theory in 1910 states that the crown shape of posterior teeth resembles two cones sharing a common base that is this is a cone and this is a cone and the posterior teeth resembles two cones sharing a common base as you could see in this image. So this is the occlusal cone and this is the cervical cone sharing a common base. The part of the clasp that ends on the cervical cone, that is this cone, the part of the clasp that ends here would resist movement in an occlusal direction. Line at which the two cones meet is known as the height of contour, that is the line of the greatest circumference. This term was coined by Kennedy initially. Devan in 1955 coined these two terms, supra bulge and infra bulge. Occlusal to height of contour, the part is known as supra bulge, and below height of contour, the part is known as infra bulge. So, what are the requirements of the clasp? As such, the clasp should provide retention, stability, support, as well as reciprocation, encirclement and passivity. If time permits, we will discuss in detail about these concepts later in detail. Now moving on to the components of the clasp assembly, you should know these four terms basically. Rest, retentive arm, reciprocal arm and minor connector. This is the rest, this is the retentive arm and this is the reciprocal arm. The minor connector is this part which helps in connecting the clasp assembly to the other parts of the RPD. The retentive arm in turn is divided into retentive terminal, shoulder and body. Now let us dive deep into it. As I said, this is the reciprocal arm, this is the rest and this is the retentive arm. As you could see here in another dimension of the clasp assembly, the retentive arm is in turn divided into retentive terminal, shoulder and body. The body connects the shoulder and the retentive terminal to the minor connector which is present here. The retentive terminal is placed below height of contour and it is the only flexible part present. The reciprocal arm functions by, the act, it acts against the action of retentive terminal. Reciprocation is its main function, hence the name reciprocal arm. Minor connector joins the body to the remaining part of the framework. So this is in detail about the parts of the clasp assembly. Hope you got an idea. In the next video, we will see about types of clasps. Until then, thank you.